So in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout South Australia and their connection to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people today. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to start off with a quick poll just to check who I've got in here today. Um, so first of all, can you just indicate whether you've already joined one of our webinars this week? So if you haven't been before, you should have a pop-up on your screen and just indicate yes or no. Um, there's a couple of people that haven't answered, but it looks like most people have. So I won't go through this first slide. You can access these slides later. Um, I've posted a link in the top of the chat to them as well. Um, so we skip those and I think we get straight into Teams. I will remind people about this tip. So if you are trying to follow along with the tutorial and work on a computer and only have one screen, you can, if you're on a Windows computer, hold down the Windows key and the left or the right arrow to split your screen. And I'm actually going to do that on my screen when I share my screen a bit later so that you can see the student view and uh, the teacher view of OneNote as well. The chat. Um, yesterday I wasn't sharing the correct screen for part of it, so if I accidentally do that today, can someone please come off mute? Um, that way I don't talk for five minutes and no one knows what's happening. So please, if um, talk about something that you can't see, come off mute and uh, that will save everyone um, from being confused. Okay, so I'm just going to share my of a screen and although this is class notebook I am going to start the session by talking a bit about class teams. Now the reason why we do this is that if you're using class notebook you can set a class notebook up independently of teams however if you then decide that you want to use teams in the future it's really difficult to connect your class notebook with your new class team. If you set your class notebook up through a class team though, you can forget about the team and just use the class notebook. But if you want to use the team later, that it's already connected. So I'm gonna do another poll quickly, just to see, first of all, whether, people have used class teams before or if you came to my webinar earlier in the week on class teams and that will give me an idea of how fast I can go through this first section Okay, so there's a few people that haven't, there's a few people that have, um, and there's some people that joined in on Tuesday, so hopefully you've had a chance to play. So I think I will still take us through this first section, but even if you were attending on Tuesday, it will give you a bit of a recap. So I've got my teams open, and to create a new team, I'm going to go to join or create team. And then I'm going to click on create team. And because I'm using this team definitely with students, I want to click on class. Give it a name. And 
Now, when I did the webinar on Tuesday, I talked about making sure that you put in a name that is easily identifiable, not just for your class and your students, but also if you happen to accidentally delete the team so that um, ICT services can go in and find it for you. So we suggest you maybe start the name of, of your team with your school four-digit number. Um, that way it can be easily found. Okay, so, um, you can follow along with this as we go if, if you can. Um, that way when we get to the class notebook section, you've got your team already set up. If you do already have a test team set up, you can skip this bit and just um, open that up and get ready to play with the class notebook section. I'm going to skip that there. And um, just in that um, the summary of today's training, just want to point your attention to, I'll just grab it across. Um, this link here, if later on you want to click on there, that's a link to an actual teaching notebook. Um, so you can go back and have a look at that as well. Okay, so my team channel is set up. All right, bring that back out of the way. Um, I'm not going to worry about adding my students at the moment or changing my team. Picture. I will just show people or remind people about team settings though. Um, so those three little dots there, I can go into manage team. And then I've got my settings here. Actually, I will add one person. And if you can add one person in as a student as well. So it could be a colleague that's joining in today, or it could be just a colleague that's one of your teachers. Um, I might just add someone in from the chat. If someone could put their hand up and be a volunteer. Thanks, Kerry. Okay. So either in this new team that you've just created today or in a try team that you created on Tuesday, if you've got one student, you'll see that you're able to mute these students. So if I check this, if Kerry tried to type a message in either of our channels now, she's not able to do that. Um, so this bit is handy if you've got kids that are going a bit berserk um, and you need to take some of that control back. Okay. Um, I won't go too much into the channels, apart from the fact that in a class team, you can set up general um, and private channels. So private channels, you can set up just to share between one or two students, or you could set it up for a co-teacher. Um, but I won't go through that today because we've got a fair bit to go through. So I think we just move straight in to our class notebook. So if you are following along with the team at the training summary, I'm kind of skipping a bit in the class team and I'm going to move down to page two and start with the class notebook stuff. So in this test team here, if you click on class notebook, the first time you open it up, it will just be a blank notebook. So you've just got to click on set up a OneNote class notebook. You can do it from an existing one, um, but we're just going to click on blank notebook. And then it will tell you what you're going to get. You can go in here and change these folders if you want. So these are folders that will appear in individual student sections. I normally keep it as is because I can always go in and change that later. So I'm just going to click Create. And then it's going to take a while to set up. So while that's setting up, um, and yours will take a while too. I'm going to go in and show you another notebook that I've already done, just so I can go through and explain some of those sections that we just clicked OK to. So this is an example of a notebook. Some of the bits are bits that I've actually 
taught from, that I pulled out from notebooks that I've used. Um, I use notebook in my classroom as my learning management system. Um, I've used it where my students didn't have access to individual devices. And in that case, I had it on my whiteboard at the front of my screen and was using it that way. Um, but I've also used it uh, in a class or in classes where students have one-to-one -one devices. Um, and I'm really passionate about class one night. I think it's fantastic. It does take a bit to get your head around, um, but once you understand the setup, because it looks quite different from other Microsoft products, um, hopefully you'll fall in love with it as well. Again, it does take a bit for your students to get used to as well, if it's the first time they're using it. Um, but once you work through it together, um, it, it's pretty straightforward when you get when you understand how it works. So this is my notebook. Um, I've got a couple of sections at the top here. So in here, I might put things that I'm gonna have to click on all the time, like my class agreement. I might put my timetable up here as well. The next space is a collaboration space. Now this here is visible to teachers and students. And here, you can have students um, or students have the ability to add and write. So in here, whoops, let's just zoom across. So this is an example of an activity I did with my class at the beginning of a science unit. It was just a what you think you know um, table. And you can see here my students have added things in the box. Down here, you can see all these initials. So that's telling me which students added what. If I click on them as, again, it might not come up because I've copied this. Oh, yeah. So this, if I clicked on the initials, I can see which student added it as well and when they added it. So that's quite handy. So that's a co collaboration space. You can go in and change the settings so that only particular students can access the different sections in there, and you can turn it off altogether. Um, but that's a great way for students to collaborate in real time. The next section is the content library. So this is where you'd put all your learning material. So if I click on this, um, so this one here is an example of me teaching the Italian lattice method. So I've done that on my whiteboard. If you have a touch screen computer, you could use your stylus or on an iPad as well. And um, the good thing about OneNote as well is if you are doing some kind of thing that the order that you put things is important, there's a really cool tool called Replay. So if I just go to view, there's this cool tool called replay. So if I click on replay and I draw a box around that, it will then play back the order in which I put things on the screen. So that's really handy to show students as well, because if they want to re-look at how something was worked out, they can use that replay tool as well and then go through the order as well. You can use this for things like um, writing. If you're teaching a second language, you could um, use it for the way you write characters. You can use it in all sorts of applications. Um, the students can also go back and forward to see the way they did it. So that's the replay tool under view. Okay, another thing about my content library, you can see that I've got these sections um, coloured. I find it's really useful for students if you do try and colour code sections, because then that makes it easier for them to find things. So this is an example of a primary notebook. And in this one, I actually had my specialist teachers in my same class notebook. So you can see these pink ones down here. They're the specialist subjects that I didn't teach, so they're all pink. And then I've got my English type subjects that are brown. 
and then other colors for other subject areas. Um, I won't show you how to do that yet because I'll just go through the rest of the sections and then we'll hopefully be able to look at your own ones and play it around. Okay, the next section is the teacher only section. Now this section isn't visible to students. So I'm just gonna bring up my student one so that you can see. Um, okay, so this is my student here. And you can see that in there, there's no teacher section. I'll just close these all up so that it looks a bit the same. So they've got the collaboration space, the content library, but there's no teacher only section. And in this section here, you can see it's read only. So as a student, I can't go in and move things in this section. The collaboration space, I can type away in as a student, um, but the content library again is a read only section. So that's handy to know. The other thing while I'm in here is you see in my teacher one note here, I've got three students folders. So as a teacher, I can see all my students in there. I would normally have a lot more than three students in my class. Um, but as a student, I've only got access to my one folder here. So I've got those folders that were created by uh, when we created the OneNote that I can go in and write in, um, but I don't see those other students' folders. Okay, um, just back in the teacher only section, how I might use this is I might do all my planning in here, and then just when I'm ready to give that work to students, I would then right click and I might go to uh, copy and then copy that page into my content library. Now the reason I would do copy instead of move, so you can move pages, but I like to keep a blank copy for me so that if I want to reuse the same thing the next year, I can copy that same blank one across to a new workbook rather than going in and getting rid of all the writing and, and, and stuff that's on there. Okay, so they're basically the sections in the OneNote. So I think now we we'll hop back into Teams and hopefully you've got a OneNote that looks like this. Can people just give, oh, I haven't turned on reactions. Better turn on reactions. If you're not sure how to turn on reactions, it's the three dots if you're running the meeting and then meeting options and then you can turn on reactions. Okay, that's better. Okay, so if you can give me a reaction with a thumbs up if you've got your class notebook ready to go. Excellent. I'm getting some thumbs up. together mode so I can see you. Okay, good. So um, in the Welcome to Class Notebook page, I normally just delete that. Um, in Teams as well, it's not that great an experience working with OneNote, especially if you've got a small screen. So you can go up to this here that says Open in Browser and click on the little arrow down. And if you've got it installed on your desktop, I'd suggest open in desktop app. Otherwise, if you open in browser. Now the browser doesn't have the same capabilities as the desktop app. So if you've got it installed or can get it installed, I suggest you do that. Okay. So hopefully, just go back into Teams, try again. It doesn't seem like it's open for me. Try again. 
Okay, let's make use the web search for the moment and see whether I can get it in here. Might be a bit confused because I was joining in with my student account as well. Ah, uh, yep. Okay, let's try one more time. So it hasn't popped up here. I'm going to go down and click on more notebooks and see if I can find it here. Ah, yep. It's in here, so that's the one I want to open. So I did that a bit fast in case you missed it. If you go in one note to that little arrow next to the name of your notebook, that allows you to go in between notebooks that you've got. And down the very bottom, there's an option to add a notebook if you want a new notebook or more notebooks. So if you can't see a notebook that you've created there, you can click on more notebooks and then hopefully you will find it in there. Okay, so can you give me a thumbs up if you've managed to open your notebook in OneNote? Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Kerry. Okay, there might be a few people on the web version. Hopefully, everyone's just about there. Okay, so first of all, we're going to do a new section. So there's a little bit of a, it's not that intuitive for this bit. In order to do a new section, you actually have to be on the first page in a new section. So if you click on teacher only and click on that using the teacher only space, then down the bottom, if you click on add section, it will add a section to that teacher only. If I'm up here or anywhere else, when I do add section, it's going to add it into that top. So I want to make sure that I've not only, and I'll just delete that, I'm not only clicking on that heading, but I actually click inside as well. Okay. Um, I'll show you how to change the colour as well. So if I've created this new section, I'm going to right click and just go to section colour, and then I can choose a new section colour. All new pages come up as untitled page, and you can't go in and name them in there. It's up here in that first top line that you name them. So, I'm going to type that in there, and then you'll see that page is, create, is created. You can go down to the bottom and click Add Page to add a new page as well. Um, and I'm just going to make about three new pages. Okay, so I've hopefully got a new section in my teacher only space, and then I've got about three new pages that I've created by doing add page, and I've named them by clicking and giving them a name. If you've got a section and you've got like 10 or 15 pages, you might want to do something called uh, sections or, or sorry, sub pages. So if you right click on the page and then go make sub page, it will come up underneath. I'm just going to drag my maths examples down as well. And now you can see I've got R and maths underspelling. And if I click on that little arrow there, they disappear. So I'll just go back to my, um, actually I'll go into one of my actual teaching examples. Um, so this is uh, a year three, four class that I taught. And you can see here, I've got lots of sections with sub pages. So I've got writing speech, I've got narratives, I've got reading procedures, information reports. 
so that I can collapse all those so that it looks a bit better for students. And then if I'm doing narratives, I can just go in to that page and open that one up. So that's sub pages. I'll just go back to my test one. And here we go. So can you just give me a thumbs up if you've managed to create some sub pages? Thanks, Kerry. Did anyone have any questions? Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Inta. Anyone else have any questions at the moment? Everyone's okay? Okay. Um, now, if I've created this page, it's in my teacher only page um, section, and I want to now put it into my content library so students can access it. Again, um, I'm going to right click on that page and I'm going to go move copy. And then I can choose where I want to put it. So I'm going to move this page to or copy this page to my content library. You have to have it in a section. So if you haven't already created a section, um, you'll need to create that before you copy it across. And then I'm going to click on copy. Just remember me as a teacher, I like a clean page that I can go back to. So now in that content library, in that section using the content library, I've got that nice example there. Um, just if you want to rename those, you can right click and go rename section. And then if you want to get rid of that getting started as well, you can right click and go delete page. Or you could just click on the page and go control A to highlight everything and delete and then rename it. OK, so you might want to do that with the welcome and the facts as well. Um, and the use in the collaboration space. So you can just either delete the page or um, you can go in and delete the content. OK, um, if you can go into your collaboration space now, and we might rename this using the collaboration space, and let's just rename that as um, getting to know you. I'm going to add a page and class pets. OK, one thing I've found about using the collaboration space is in that first example, I showed you a table and it didn't have any labels around what student could write in which, in which box. What I found is if you give students a table like that, half the time everyone tries to write in the same box. So my tip is either you copy and paste in a class list or you put in a table and you put numbers in the table when you assign people boxes. So I'm just going to show you how to insert a table. So it's just insert and table and we're just going to make it uh, two by eight and then I want to go and put the numbers in. Now you can go into table and you've got a bit more um, editing facilities, but it isn't like Word where you can do all sorts of fancy things. So one way around that is to create the table in Word and copy and paste it across, or you can create it in OneNote. Now this table as well, at the moment, um, is not that great. I actually need to make that box bigger and then I'll be able to make that second box bigger. So you'll notice that the table is inside this other container. So you have to make that container big first before you can make the columns on your table big. If I want a new um, 
row, I can just go to the end and press tab as well. And then now when I'm asking my class to write their class pets, for example, um, I can give them a number. Okay. The other thing that's great about OneNote is you can add audio files. So if you've got a student that is struggling with um, reading or if you just find it quicker to say something rather than write instructions, you can go to insert and click on audio. And it's already recording what I'm saying. So it will record directly in there. And when I press stop, and hopefully this works, click on there. It's recorded exactly what I'm saying. Hopefully you heard that playback. Um, so that's a great way that you can add instructions for students. Um, you can't rename that WAV file, but you can get rid of that box just by clicking and then pressing insert to insert delete. Okay, so that's inserting audio instructions. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can insert a file printout. So I'm going to go back into my teacher only and go into my test space and just choose one of those pages that I set up earlier. And in case you don't have a file ready, I did put in a couple of files, hopefully, um, that people could use earlier. So there's a, the About Me task. Um, Hopefully that one will come up. There we go. Okay. So if you've got your own Word document, that's fine. Just go to insert and then we want print out. And then choose that file. So there's my about me task. And it's going to insert the file. Uh -uh. Okay, all right, let's, let me try again. Let's insert a different one because uh, I think I've got it open in Word. So you might, if you are using that, you might have to download your own copy and do a save as. Um, let's do this one instead. Okay, so it's put it in as a Word document. It's put it in as a PDF and it also put it in as a file printout. So I can then move this around. Now this was only one page long, but if it was two pages long, it would put it in as separate pages. If it's something that I want students to actually write on, at the moment, if, when, if I move it in to the collaboration space, for example, so students can write on it, um, it could go all over the place. As well, if I'm using this on my board and I want to do annotation over the top, I don't want this picture moving about. So one thing you can do to make sure the picture stays in the same place is you can right click and then go set picture as background. That way I now don't have any ability to move it about. So if I wanted to go to my drawer, for example, um, let me do it. Yep, I can then write over the top of it without worrying about that picture moving. I did have a bad experience once where we did a whole lesson with a picture of our school from Google Maps on the board um, and we were doing the out of bounds area and then at the end of the lesson, the map moved and we could never get it back in the right place. So right click and set as background um, is a really good tip. Okay, the other thing is that if you're doing lots of file printouts um, and you keep that original file in there, um, let's just go back to there, um, your OneNote can get really big and you probably don't want that because it will take a long time to open up on student devices and your own device. So another thing you can do 
let's go back into our class team. And oops, let's go back into files. So I'm in my general channel files. And I'm just going to drop another file in there. Actually, if you were with me the other day, you'll know you probably don't want it kept there. You want it put in your class materials. So let's move that into my class materials. Okay, I'm going to go up here into my classroom materials, find that file, go to the three dots and go to copy link. Make sure I copy that. It says people with existing access can use the link. So that's people within this team. That would be my students. So copy that. And I'll go back to my OneNote. I'll go insert. And I can put in that file. And then the student can click on that and it will open it. It should open it. My OneNote isn't liking me today because I've logged in as someone else might just go into that class team and add my student account and then that might make it a bit easier. So manage team, add member, put in my student account and then that might, might make life a little bit easier. Okay, let's try again. So now, when my student clicks on that file, they should have access to that report. Okay, but because it's in my class materials, they can only view it, they can't actually um, write on it. Okay, so that's linking to a file within Teams. Okay. So I think now we go back into class teams and I'm going to show you about the assignments feature that links with class teams and class notebook. Oh, sorry, we've got a question. Is it possible to type on a fixed bag background or just draw or write? With OneNote, no matter where you click, you can get a cursor. So I'll just delete that writing that I did over the top. But here I can type in, so it doesn't matter where you press, you can get a text box appear. Um, the other thing is you might want to insert, um, you can insert some checkboxes, so you can insert an actual checkbox for students to use. You can also um, insert stickers. So if you were going in and um, marking the student's work, there's a whole lot of fun stickers in there that you can put in. Um, check your spelling, for example. So you can use those um, to make your student work look a, um, nice. Okay, so that's in insert and stickers. Um, you can also insert a form directly in your OneNote as well. Um, and the mass tool is really cool as well. So um, if you click on the mouse, um, let's type in a mouse. So let's do a new page. And do a really simple two plus three equals. And we're going to select. And then hopefully solve it. Oops. Um, hmm. 
There we go. So it solves it. Um, it also, it's not gonna, it also shows you some steps as well. So if it's more complicated, it shows you the different steps and also you can, it will generate a quiz for students as well um, so they can practice. So that's quite handy as well. Not sure why it's using evaluate. I think that must be an American term for some. Okay, so thanks for that question, Zinta. Hopefully that answered it. Back into Teams. I'm now going to click on assignments. And I'm just going to go to create. And I want just an assignment. I need to give it a title. And now I can put in instructions or I can just go to attach. And this time I'm going to choose class notebook. That's going to bring up the notebook that belongs to this class. I can then choose the page that I want to add to this assignment. You can choose one from the teacher only section. So if you set something up in your teacher only section as um, an assignment, you can select that and then click attach. And then that's going to copy that page into each student notebook. So this is my maths example. I might want to put that in my student's homework folder, for example. So that's where if you want to create more folders for your students, you might want to do it by subject area. OK, let's do done. Um, I can add a rubric if I want to. So I just click on there. So I've got lots of rubrics that I've already created. Um, but if you don't, you can just click on add rubric and just we just um, enter a few words in here. Now just a note with this, if I type, ah, it looks like they fixed it. It used to have no spell check, but um, it looks like they have now fixed the spell check. So that's really good news. Um, spelling some errors. Um, lots of errors. Um, hardly any correct. Obviously, I wouldn't use this with students because it's um, not very good language. Um, if you want to add another row though, you can here and enter more descriptions in there. Okay, let's give it some points as well. Um, so, yep, let's attach that. Uh, I can change the points here, maybe. And then I'm gonna click assign. Okay, so now, in here, to have my two students, hopefully, thinking about it. It's still thinking about it. It will have posted in the general channel that there's an assignment. So students will see that. And I might see if I can bring up my student queue again. Um, just have to find the correct team for this student as well. There we go. that my students should see in their assignments as a new assignment. 
Um, yeah, there it is. That's the class, test 27, and they've got a new assignment there. So the student sees that. When they click here, that takes them to that page that is in their own folder. And when I'm, as a teacher, go in, I can see my student's beauty because I've opened it up. And if I click on there, it will show me their page. So if my student writes something in there, as a teacher, I can see it. Um, and so as a teacher as well, I can say, give some feedback. And I don't want to return, I want to return for revision. And then I should see as a student that I've got a message pop up here. So if I go in there, needs revision. Let's see if I can see my teacher's feedback as well. doesn't look like I can. Um, so you might have to keep that in mind as a teacher rather than use the feedback. The feedback the students can definitely see when you click return. Um, I thought you could see it when you did return for revision, but it looks like you can't. Um, so just make sure you um, add either writing on their work or a sticky note. Um, so that you can give them that feedback when you do that return for revision. Okay, um, I'll just go back into the OneNote as well for my student. Just so you can see, there's that test notebook. And that's my student folder. And in homework, you can see that maths example is now there. Okay, so that's linking an assignment to your OneNote. Okay, um, just a little bit more on assignments. So let's close that. Ah, you, oh, I must have ah, I returned it for revision. Um, so um, just if I go back into there, I've got that rubric. If I want to use that rubric to mark, I can click there and then select uh, what, I've what I've chosen for their work, and then that will automatically generate them some points. I can as well scroll between different students by using the arrows. And then again, it's either return for revision or return. Because I've marked this one now, it's come up with the mark there. If I go into grades, I can see the marks in there as well. And if I want to export that to Excel, I can here. And that will download. OK. Um, the last thing I want to show you is if a student's done some work and you can't find it, you might be able to find it in SharePoint. So let's go back into that team. I'm going to go into my files. I won't see the student work here, but if I go to open in SharePoint, that opens up my team in SharePoint. You can see I've got class materials here. There's that file I put in earlier. If I go to site content, I should have, no. <laughs> okay, so it should show me, ah, there it is, student work. So when I click on there, I can now see submitted work. So that's my student that submitted that folder. And 
didn't attach anything, so it's not there. But if it's an assignment with something attached, you'll find it in there. Working files. Again, I don't think this will show me anything because it's a OneNote page. But if it was a Word document that I attached, that would come up there as well. So you can look in if you attach a, a document other than a OneNote page and see what students are working on as well. Okay, there is one other thing that I'll go through, and that is how we change some of the settings on this. I mentioned earlier that you can change the settings in the collaboration space, and I also mentioned that you can change what we've got in the folders down here. So in order to do that, I need to go to Class Notebook, and then I can go to Manage Notebooks. Now, this will open it up on the web, and it gives me this here. So here's the students. So here's where I can add sections. And save. This is the collaboration space. So if I go to locked, that means that no students can use the collaboration space, or I can do unlocked. And this is where I can set those individual permissions. So if I click on collaboration space permissions, um, I can add a section in there. And then I can choose that maybe I just want Kerry to be able to add to this section. The other thing I can do in here is give read only access. So you might want to use this if you're doing group work. You could set up different sections for each of your groups, but you might want your groups to be able to see what other groups are doing. So in this case, I choose which students can read and edit. And then I might give read only access to those other students in the class so that although they can't add to those pages, they can still see what the other groups are doing. Okay. Now, you'll notice it says parent or guardian links. Unfortunately, the way our um, domain is set up with the department, we don't at currently have access to give parents and guardians access to your OneNote. We are hoping that this might change in the future, but at the moment, even though it looks nice there, that you'll be able to share it, um, the way it's set up, we can't share it with parents and students. Okay, um, so that's a bit about the settings. Um, and the last thing I've got in there is around reading progress. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are primary teachers. I'll just do a quick poll. because I'm not sure whether reading progress is relevant to um, relevant to secondary. So we just see what year levels we've got. Okay. Um, so we've got a few more primary than secondary. So I might, seeing as we've got a little bit of time, go through this. Um, again, I know the department is moving away from things like reading records, but I was thinking about it um, last night and I was thinking it, it is still valuable to be able to record what is how a student is reading, even if you're not doing it for levelling purposes. Um, so this isn't... Uh, class notebook, but it is class teams. So let's go back into my class team. And 
I'm actually going to go into one that I've pre-recorded and hopefully I can get it okay. Um, So this is a new feature that came out late last year. Hopefully I've got it. See how so there we go. Um, okay, wait, let me go in there. Let's try again. Going to this one. Okay, so this is the assignment that's been set up. I actually got my son to read this one. Um, so he's read some text. And what um, Reading Progress does is it goes through and it does or highlights mispronunciations, repetitions, omissions, self-corrections and insertions, gives you an accuracy rate. You can go in and change the pronunciation sensitivity. So if you've got lots of students that are English as a second language student, my son, actually, his first language is French. So that's why I've got it as low. Um, you can change that. Also, when you listen, if they've made a mistake, or you think it's actually a self-correction instead of a repetition, you can go in and change um, change that. Um, but it's pretty cool. Um, I'll just see whether I've got my audio sharing. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear? No? OK. Let's, I'll just stop sharing my screen for a moment. And share my computer screen sound as well. That's another tip. If you're um, wanting to share videos and sound, make sure when you share your screen, you make sure you share the sound as well. So let's just press that's play. Some people think that C++ is. It should, and it's not doing it for me, but it should show where his reading it's has been going. Sea horses live in the ocean. They are fish, but some people think that sea horses look a bit like. like okay, so it's not showing me for some reason. Um, but it should show me when they're reading as they're going down. Um, the insights. It's taking forever as well. We might skip this. Um, I'll just go and show you how to set one up though, just in case, because it's a little bit um, not where you think it would be. So I'll go back into my test team. I'll go into assignments. I'm going to go to create. I'm going to choose a new assignment. And this time I'm going to give it a name. And how I change it to reading progress is I press attach and I choose reading progress there. Now Microsoft has got a whole lot of samples as well. Um, it does have some secondary samples in there. So you could um, say one or choose one that they've loaded. You can see what it looks like in the student view. Um, might not let me do it because it wants to see my camera to record and I'm in this meeting, but it should show what the student's looking like. And then when you press start, it will scroll through the text. Unfortunately, you can't, um, put in a text or scan in a text with images, it's just the text. Um, so another tip is that you could attach a PDF of the text that has images in there, as well as attaching that reading progress. So you could go in and um, 
attach a file from OneDrive or upload a file from your device to that. Um, so it's in there. You can assign it to different students as well. So if you're using it and you want to have students reading at different levels, you could load a whole lot of different leveled text in there or the same text but in three different levels. And then you can click on individual students and choose which student has that assignment. Um, so that's really handy as well. Um, the other thing about reading progress, and I can't show you because I haven't done it with a full class of students, but it will, once the whole class or a group of students have read the same text, it will highlight in a word cloud the most, uh, the words that are most mispronounced um, or most omitted so that you can focus your instruction on, on those words. So that's a bit about reading progress. I think we're just about out of time. I'm happy to hang around for any other questions. Um, there is a link um, that might be useful. It's in the PDF at the beginning, but I'll just pop it into the chat as well. Oh, glad you got it, Cinta. Um, so this is... Um, a Microsoft support page and it's actually got a teacher and a student version um, so that might be something that you could pass on your, to your students as well. Um, I will pop in the links to our YouTube channel about Class Notebook and Class Teams as well. Hopefully they work all right. Um, and then lastly, if you can give us some um, feedback on our training form, that would be great because that will also generate a certificate for you. And I do go in and check your feedback and try and change um, and improve things as well. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Good luck next week uh, when we start this two weeks of online learning. Um, please feel free at any time to reach out, send me an email, send me a message on Teams. Um, I'm always happy to help if I can um, with any of your questions. And yeah, good luck. Fingers crossed everything goes as smoothly as it can. <laughs>